This is Charles S. Greenwood, PE. Yes, I'm a professional engineer and I'm involved for more than 20 years now in the specifics of treehouse engineering. Today, we're gonna to talk specifically about mounting and remounting tree houses. The tree houses themselves, like the one we're in, there's many other engineering issues that we uh, discuss on another forum. Here, we're gonna talk about mounting. I'd like to start with a brief overview of, oh, say the last million years of human occupation in trees. People figured out a long time ago they were safe to be in and desirable, and they figured out more and more ways to build their houses up above the ground. About 10,000 years ago, metallurgy arrived and people started pinning with bronze pins, uh, nails, square nails, and this led successfully to about 5,000 years ago more and more advanced methodologies leading to what now we would consider to be timber framing, mortise and tenon joinery, and those joints augmented by metallurgy. Now, about eight or 900 years ago, this device was a secret military weapon introduced to and from the Viking technology, and it gave them a tremendous advantage in building their warships because they were able to make straight, long, true hulls, which allowed them to peg their ship timbers together. It also allows us today to conveniently drill holes of almost any size and depth in wood. It took another four or five hundred years until we started seeing screw threads, in this case a standard lag thread, advanced and in Europe and finally in America in the early 19th century patents began to form and it wasn't long till the railroads needed high strength methods to attach to harvested wood for trestles and things. This led almost immediately to a timber shear washer which could be mounted on a lag bolt or through bolt and pick up a lot of extra area on vertical grain shear. It's the vertical grain shear that holds your tree house up. So this is an important factor and also devices which were simply trapped into two connecting timbers would have the same large area of bearing area for vertical grain shear. About uh, 20 or so years ago, there was an organization, the World Treehouse Association. There was an effort to produce a more common fastener. This led ultimately to a design which I would call the W-TAB, World Treehouse Association Bolt. Since it derived essentially from sticking a bolt in a tree and then finally marrying it to a form of shear collar, this got things moving and small tree houses can be built to this day using this technology. However, since it has a limited bearing area, almost immediately on large commercial tree houses, we had to come up with what folks called the beer can. Uh, this was a welded steel tube which allowed the fastener to have a substantially greater amount of vertical grain bearing and would allow the tree to bolster and move out on this growth. These supported many, many times the load of the standard fastener. So a more common immediate result was integrated beam mounts and W tabs, or tabs as they're now called, with longer bearing area. Once again, people wanted to build bigger and bigger tree houses. So finally, for the uh, Mount Airy Forest wheelchair accessible treehouse project um, built eight years ago near Cincinnati in their city park. We developed what is called the HL or heavy limb, hyper limb. And this has a much larger shank, a more aggressive thread uh, is made out of uh, heat treated chrome molly with about 185,000 PSI yield strength and a lot of bearing area. And you can always do your exercises with it too. Now, in the early days, we looked at how do trees actually attach their own limbs. And this became a very difficult 
manufacturing problem to emulate. So it's taken many years to come up with a methodology that will allow us to duplicate the advantages that such a connection has. And we'll talk a little later about and watch the installation of that type of fastener. Thank you.